turned on. With the monsoons in full force, Bangladesh has become ideal guerrilla territory. The Muktis know their country and its waterways. They have the edge over the Pakistan soldiers. When the army comes out of its barracks, it is forced to adopt guerrilla tactics to fight the guerrillas. Now whole areas are under the flag of Bangladesh. Foreign papers carry news stories datelined Mujib Nagar. This is the name given to every town and village which comes under guerrilla control. The United States unfortunately um, did not see Bangladesh or Bangladeshis as a vital geopolitical importance. And they placed uh, a trip by Henry Kissinger of greater importance in the lives of several million people and its displacement to another country, destruction of their homes. And I felt very strongly about the lies that were being propagated to our elected rep representatives in this country. So Guerrilla success, the tension in Dhaka grows. Bengali shops fly Pakistani flags or even display pictures of Yahya Khan as insurance against army reprisals. In broad daylight on the main streets of Dhaka, civilians are stopped by soldiers and searched for arms. The army has begun to feel threatened by the guerrillas it once dismissed with such contempt. And the army has reason to feel threatened. In the heart of Dhaka, guerrilla sabotage units carry out a daring raid on the film section of the Pakistani administration's information office. With increasing frequency, Dhaka is rocked by explosions from bombs planted by Mukti saboteurs. The Bengalis have at last begun to win the psychological war against the Pakistan army. The land battle in the east proceeds. The air is India's. The sea is India's. Nevertheless, the eastern commander of the Pakistan army, General Niazi, remains defiant. I am proud of my troops, their discipline, their bravery, their tradition. And I'm sure we will be able to maintain <coughs> the tradition of our forefathers, which have never lost a battle. But 72 hours after the war begins, the liberation also begins. Garrison after garrison gives up to the Indian armed forces without firing a shot. General Manikshaw, chief of army staff, sends a message to the already beleaguered Pakistani generals in Dhaka that they surrender immediately. He warns that there can be no escape, either by sea or air. The noose around Dhaka is drawn tighter with the help of the Indian Air Force's helicopters. It takes 72 hours for the helicopters to put enough men behind Pakistani lines to capture Silet. Now the choppers drop troops onto the very outskirts of Dhaka. The engineers of the Indian Army provide instant mobility by building bridges as fast as the Pakistanis can blow them up. The hallmark of the Indian campaign is the complete coordination between the service wings. On the Eastern Front, the Mukti Bahini provide military intelligence and ancillary offensives. December 16th, Pakistan units begin to surrender. Amir Abdullah Khan Niazi, Martial Law Administrator and Commander of the Pakistan Eastern Command, offers unconditional surrender to General Jagjit Singh Arora commander of the combined Indian and Mukti forces in the Eastern Theater. General Aurora flies to Dhaka to accept the surrender. Strict military protocol is observed at the race course, where the instrument of surrender is signed. It is 4.31 in the afternoon. 90,000 Pakistani soldiers become prisoners of war. <laughs> 